Welcome to Let's Build a Really Cheap. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to wire your alternator on your 1947CJ to Really Cheap. And this is in case you have converted your generator to an alternator. Your generator would have been a 6 volt system. Your alternator now is a 12 volt system. And it's very important that we have an alternator that's been converted to 45 amps or below 50 amps because our amp gauge on the dashboard only goes up to 50 amp maximum. We wanna make sure this is a little bit below 50 amps because you don't want your amp gauge to overheat and it might cause a fire. Now at the dashboard here, as you can see, the amp gauge only goes up to 50 amps. It's very critical we have a alternator that does not produce more than 50 amps of power. This diagram comes from Locke's four-wheel drive parts and we'll be connecting the alternator to our right side harness or splicing it in to number seven. Number seven is your 12 gauge red three white tracer. This would be for your voltage regulator battery terminal, but in this case, we don't have a voltage regulator. So we can bypass our voltage regulator and just wire number seven straight into our alternator. Coming from your right side harness, this is your number seven wire, your red three white tracer. And you can see, which we'll is use this wire to connect to our alternator power post. But as you can see, the wire is a little bit short when you want to connect your wire to the fender. So this wire isn't wiggling around when you're driving. So we will have to splice on our wire so we can get that distance to get this wire connected. To make our wire longer, we can use a wire from our generator voltage regulator harness and we can use the 3-6 wire, or the same wire as we have going, the 12 gauge red three white tracer. So you just take number three and six from your harness, and I've already done so. This is the wire that you will get. And now we can cut one of the ends, and we'll splice it onto our other wire, and we'll make sure that we keep the loop the bigger loop on our wire so it'll connect to our alternator make sure you don't mess this up because it won't get on to your post and your alternator once you get your wire spliced this is what it should look like so you have your number seven wire coming out of your dashboard and this is your voltage regulator wire i have them spliced together uh, heat shrink them so it protects your joint to make this a permanent connection. Once you have your loom installed over your wire to protect your wire from the elements of the engine heat and just debris, we will use a clamp and clamp it to the fender, thread that on, and then we will attach the large loop to the power post or alternator. We'll just slide it on and put a lock washer and a nut on. Finally, we have to make sure we ground our alternator to the engine block. So on the bottom, there is a ground bolt and we will thread on a large one gauge wire to the engine block. And we'll just thread it on with a bolt on the side of your engine block. And that is the same gauge wire as I'm using for the starter motor. It's the one gauge wire that you can buy from Lox four wheel drive parts. And this is how you wire up your alternator. Make sure you convert it to under 50 amps. So you don't have to run fuses and stuff like that. It makes it a lot easier. Thanks for watching and subscribe.